Okay, this is Ryan Ham, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a comparison of uh, two very similar um, in history and uh, in in function and almost in size, two very similar pistols from the uh, early 20th century. Um, you know, this is a Browning Model 1955, which is just an updated Model 1910, and this from the uh, mid-teens is a Remington Model 51. You can see my plaid reviews of both guns. Uh, I show a, a pretty in-depth detailed uh, strip and uh, reassembly of the Model uh, 19 or Model 51 in a uh, in another video. And uh, I'll also at the end of this video I'll do, be doing some shooting that you can compare. Essentially the range session consisted of steel cased uh, ammunition made in Russia. I had this uh, laying around and I decided to use it. And I used the entire box. Uh, you can see uh, some of the fired casings here. It's a Burden primed. And my camera loves me and will focus eventually. Okay. You can see it kind of chewed up the cases. I doubt very seriously uh, you might be able to see the uh, flash holes in there. Okay, so uh, that's the, the copper washed casings, steel casings, uh, that I shot out of it. Probably not the best idea in the world to shoot them through the Remington Model 51, but of the two guns, the blowback operated or the hesitation locked, um, the Remington actually shot them outstanding, and you'll see from the videos, uh, uh, recoil was about... Uh, I would say about a third less perceived recoil in the Remington. Uh, I was amazed. Um, I shouldn't have been. I, I know the gun <laughs> and I'd shot it enough times, but I hadn't really shot them side by side. So uh, shooting them side by side was a, was a good wake up call. Very happy with the Remington Model 51. I wish they would have made more than they actually did. Uh, these are both uh, 380s, uh, although they did make both of them also in 32 automatic. Uh, I do have a 32 automatic Remington. Uh, I do not have a 32 automatic uh, 1910. I hope to get uh, one one day. Uh, so you can watch the plaid reviews. This is just a comparison uh, comparison of the two pistols. Uh, as you can see, this one is clear, and this one is clear. And I'm going to go ahead and close the. Uh, do it right. Go ahead and close the slides so that we can get a comparison of size. And you can see the 1910 is, or can you? You should be able to see that the 1910 is shorter but fatter. It doesn't have to be. the uh, The grips are awful wide on the on the 1910. Um, they can be narrower. You can you could probably get narrower grips, but uh, that's that's what I have. You know, a full cartridge, shorter, uh, height-wise, and uh, uh, if you want to compare the barrel length, a, a full, uh, yeah, a full half inch, it looks like uh, lengthwise. Um, it's smaller. The uh, the bore access where where the bore is in comparison to the trigger and uh, the grip, bore axis is a little bit higher on the uh, Remington. Um, which uh, means that it's got more inline recoil. Now, if you uh, watch my plaid videos, you could tell that the Remington is a uh, locked breech, uh, hesitation locked, uh, so it operates in blowback for a short period of time. You can see the uh, the uh, the bolt with the extractor there, uh, and it, it does operate as a uh, as both the blowback. And a um, and a lock breech gun, so because it's a lock breech, it has a lot less recoil. And I'll explain. I, I could explain with Newton's uh, laws and all that, but suffice it to say, because a blowback um, doesn't ever lock the 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 full force of the cartridge goes into moving the slide, and the slide travels at a pretty high velocity. And because uh, velocity, 
uh, or because energy is mass times velocity squared or something like that. It's the square of the mass and the velocity. Boy, somebody's going to tear me apart on my, uh, on my physics on this one. Essentially, uh, because it's a heavier slide and it's traveling faster on a blowback gun, it will transfer more energy to your hand. The energy required to operate the gun is about half of what this will put into the slide. It doesn't need to. Uh, what happens is on, on a locked breech is that the, uh, the, the entire mass of the gun slows the, uh, the, the rearward velocity as, as the bullet goes out there. So the slide doesn't ever get a chance to attain that much velocity. It relies more on spring pressure to, to chamber around. So what that means is, with the same cartridge, the same weight gun, everything else being equal, a blowback operated pistol will transfer about a third more energy to your hand. So shooting a 380, uh, or I'm sorry, shooting a 32, would feel like shooting a 380. Shooting a 380 would almost feel like shooting a nine millimeter. And, uh, you, you know, it, it essentially amplifies the power of the cartridge already. One of the reasons why uh, modern, like the kel and the Ruger uh, locked breech uh, compact pistols are, are so popular is because they're locked breech. They're still recoil operated, so they're get, still gonna give you more energy than a true blowback locked breech oddball like the Remington Model 51, um, but they give you significantly less recoil than a blowback operated gun. And if you don't know, if you've never fired a Remington 51 side by side, I'll tell you, I have. You'll have to take my word for it or buy one of these and go out and shoot it for yourself. And they're collector's items. You can usually get into them for around $600 for a decent one. Uh, I'd highly recommend buying one if, if, if you're that interested, or you can take my word for it. All right. So Overall, they operate very similar. Um, they've both got safety levers in the back. Uh, that one doesn't have the magazine in. That's why the safety lever isn't going anywhere. Yeah, they both got uh, thumb safeties that uh, operate somewhat different. Uh, this one has a heel magazine release. This one has, the Remington has a, a, has a traditional uh, Browning style magazine release. Uh, the sights on this one which I didn't show you earlier, are very tiny also, um, but it does have a uh, knurled siding rib along here, which uh, makes it uh, feel kind of nice. One thing about the Remington Model 51, it was designed to be ergonomic. Okay, we're back after a battery change. One thing I haven't mentioned is the uh, Remington Model 51 was designed in a time when ergonomics uh, weren't quite as important as they uh, may be now. The feel of the gun, there weren't that, there weren't that many automatic pistols around and they, they were just kind of learning how to do it. The feel of the gun wasn't really um, that important at the time. Uh, mostly armies and police departments were buying them and, and uh, they were just caring about uh, pretty much how uh, good of a deal they can get how much the capacity was, uh, you know, where the guns were made, that kind of thing. Remington was really trying to design a gun for civilians. And in doing so, what they, what they did is they wanted a gun that felt good in the hand. So the Model 51 was the first, what I would call, ergonomic pistols. You can see it's got a, a decent shape to it. Let me uh, dry fire this one and I've, I'll clear it just to make sure uh, and I can't do that without the magazine okay so it's dry fire that means the uh, the uh, grip handle is going to be in so you could see the shape a little better um, Remington designed it they measured people's hands and they decided on the best shape of the grip uh, for ergonomics sake the best pointing shape I don't know how they did it I suspect they had wood models that's what I've heard where they would, they would point and uh, they would hold the model and try to point to the same area. And if they both pointed to the, the same area, then that meant that the wood model kind of matched 
where a person would naturally point so that you didn't really have to use the sights. This is one of the first uh, uh, guns out there where you could point fire. You could just point where you wanted the, the bullet to go and it would hit somewhere in the general area because it was ergonomic. Um, what I found holding this gun and the browning was that the browning pointed in a completely different area. It, it tended to point low. Just the grip angle alone, uh, it felt awkward. It doesn't feel like I'm holding um, something that was designed for the human hand. It feels like, uh, you know, it's straight. I'll put the magazine in because that'll allow me to press this. It's, it's just straight, kind of like a broom handle. No, no, no ergonomics. The, the grip angle is odd. It's, it's not the right angle. Browning like this, this angle, but uh, if you notice um, on the 1911, they have a, um, it's actually got a different angle. This is the, uh, the, the uh, earlier angle. Uh, this is the one Browning preferred. That's why he designed his guns that way. But the uh, 1911 has got a, a slightly steeper angle. And then they put a bulge in down here. Well, amazingly enough, Remington already had it figured out, or, or maybe they figured it out because this post-dated <laughs> the 1911, where it's it's got a, a, a bulge down here, and uh, and the grip angle is, is a bit more natural. Um, kind of, uh, let me see if I could put them together to show you. There it is. You can see the difference in grip angle just by just by kind of glancing at it. All right. Well, let's uh, let's take them out to the range. Um, what you'll notice, and uh, I'll just wrap up. Uh, what you'll notice is this one isn't reliable, and it seems like it's got more recoil even on the video. Didn't like this. Love this. Uh, so there we go. Let's hit the range.
So just wrapping up my range trip with my Remington Model 51 and my Browning Model 1910 or FN um, Model 1910. I think it's a Browning Model 1071 or I don't know what Browning imported it as. I was shooting steel case ammo out of that box. Had it laying around. Don't exactly know what uh, you know where I got it. Just back in the past somewhere. Uh, the Browning didn't like it very much. It had a few failure to feed out of the magazine. The, the round would get stuck halfway in. And my Remington Model 51 chewed it up and spit it out. Absolutely loved it. And it has loved every ammunition that I have fed it, including blazers, uh, the CCI blazers, which are notorious for not functioning well in any gun. Uh, I don't know if the Remington is still under warranty, so I am not worried about uh, anybody saying anything bad about shooting steel cased or aluminum cased ammo. Um, <laughs> uh, hated the 1910, the recoil uh, hurt. Surprisingly enough for a 380, not designed um, to be a comfortable gun to shoot, and I wasn't shooting anything, you know, really powerful, but um, Overall shooting impressions, the difference between the two, um, wow. Uh, you can almost uh, say that the Remington 51 had it right, and uh, this is almost 100 years ago. Don't know why they bothered designing anything different. Loved it. So let me see if I can get up close while I'm still out of the range, and I'll certainly give you better views inside. There's my range wrap up for the Remington 51 versus the Browning um, FN Model 1910. So in summary, we're back. You could see how they both operated. I've cleaned them up now. It's actually been a little while since I did the, the shooting video. Um, if I were to uh, be in the market in the 1920s for a pistol, um, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to buy this in America, and I wouldn't be able to buy this in Europe. So I would not find these sitting on the shelf side by side with price tags on them at the hardware store. It just wasn't going to happen. So they weren't really competitors. They were contemporaries, um, but uh, Remington wasn't going after the police market in Europe. Uh, Browning wasn't going after the police market in the United States. Um, uh, neither of them, or uh, it wasn't, there wasn't even a Browning at the time. It would have been Colt making these if they if they'd made them in the U.S. or they would have imported the them from Belgium, and they just weren't doing that. Um, so, kind of an odd comparison, I guess, if you if you look at uh, at history. Um, but the ironic thing is the designers of these two guns, John Browning and John Pedersen worked together at Remington designing the gun that would end up being the Remington Model 17 and later copied by Ithaca as the Ithaca Model 37. Also shows a lot of lineage towards um, uh, other guns that you might know like the Remington Model 870, the uh, Remington Model 31, and the, um, the um, Mossberg Model 500. Uh, in addition to the Belgian, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the uh, the Browning BPS, all of those guns share a common ancestor, and that's the Remington Model 17, and that's the connection between these two. Browning and Pedersen both designed uh, guns to fit the same niches in Europe and America, um, and then they worked together at Remington to develop uh, the Model uh 17, the Remington Model 17, a wonderful gun, and I'll do another video on that later. So I hope you didn't you enjoyed the shooting. Uh, if you have any questions, I, I might do a follow-up video if somebody asks a question that I haven't answered in any of my uh, series of videos on these guns. Um, until then, uh, if you like the video, please subscribe, and I will see you again on another video. Goodbye.